Mabel Chase of Kiowa County was one of the first women to be elected sheriff in the United States. She hunted for bootleggers and bank robbers in an armor-plated car with bulletproof windows. Hattie McDaniel was the first African-American to win the Academy Award for acting. This native of Wichita appeared in more than 300 films. Takiru Higuchi, known as the father of physical pharmacy, joined the faculty of the University of Kansas. He developed the concept of timed release medicines that now bring us pain relief. These are real stories about real people. Not just any people, they're Kansans. We're the Kansas Historical Society, long considered one of the premier historical agencies in the country. In 2007 alone, an amazing six million people discovered their own connections to Kansas history through our programs. Now it's your turn. In the 1830s, America was growing. As the population grew, so did the American desire for land. To free land for settlement, the United States government removed indigenous people from their lands and forced them onto reservations in areas such as Kansas. Upon arrival in Kansas, many tribes found their new living conditions to be unfamiliar and difficult. Notino of the Ottawa Nation wrote to the Superintendent of Indian Affairs in 1843 asking for the plows that had been promised four years earlier. I will write to my great father at Washington. If he shall refuse to pay any attention to my request, I shall drop the subject and be convinced that my father not only wishes to throw me away, but that he also intends to defraud me of that which is my own. New exhibits at Shawnee Indian Mission State Historic Site depict these crossroads of cultures which characterized the site's history. Visitors can listen to the voices of American Indians, missionaries, and travelers. It was 1857, and abolitionists and idealists established the territorial town of Monica. At the time, women in America could not vote. They had limited property rights and no legal rights over their own children. 42 out of the 200 people living in this small town joined the Monica Women's Rights Association. Their story comes alive in the Secretary's book, found within the walls of the Kansas Historical Society. Resolved that every woman in Kansas who believes that equal rights belong to women should consider herself a committee of one, whose duty it is to do all in her power to convert to her view at least one legal vote. The story of the fight for women's rights in Kansas can be found in our new quarterly publication, Reflections. Issues are mailed to members and can be found free online. For hundreds of freed slaves, Nicodemus represented a chance to build a better future. In 1877, a group of seven men claimed the site along the Solomon River, looking for a place to settle. At the height of its prosperity, Nicodemus had more than 700 African-American residents. The community spirit lingered and today is a monument to the black pioneers of Kansas. Nicodemus was the site of the 2007 Kansas Archaeology Training Program Field School. More than 140 students and volunteers excavated 298 bags of artifacts during the two-week program. Mabel Leg Ross was 19 years old when she started writing a diary. From 1932, when President Franklin D. Roosevelt was elected, to World War II and beyond. This Brown County resident detailed the events that impacted her life. Alfred heard a rumor in town that Japan has attacked our possessions in the Pacific Ocean. The rumor was correct. The Japanese bombed Honolulu, Hawaii, the Philippine Islands, Wake Islands, and Shanghai at 12.05 noon yesterday. At 11.30 a.m., I heard President Roosevelt's official declaration of war over the radio. Ross recently donated her diaries, photographs, and family histories to the Historical Society to share with others. The Historical Society assisted local grantees in completing a World War II oral history project to preserve the memories of veterans. With soldiers returning after the end of World War II, Americans experienced a housing shortage. 
many Kansans turned to the Lustrin Corporation for an all-steel design that promised a low-cost, convenient house. And of course, you won't overlook such practical benefits as the built-in storage wall in the master bedroom, the wonderful closet space, the cheerful kitchen with its combination dishwasher, clothes washer, and the big utility room. The Berger Lustrin House in Abilene, one of 91 remaining in Kansas, was nominated to the National Register of Historic Places. This year, the National Register properties in Kansas surpassed the 1,000 mark. The community of Waverly is passionate about its football. As the population of the town and the surrounding communities began to decline, the high school decided to switch the Waverly Bulldogs to an eight-man team in 2002. Fans were at first concerned about the change, but support began to grow for the new game. So is this game, is this a big deal for Waverly today? It is an absolute, it's, it's a shutting down the town type of game yeah, It's for a Waverly. pretty good turnout. It's, I don't think that there's probably anybody left. All of yeah. the businesses have closed down and So there's nobody to, back in Waverly, there's nobody's nobody watching back, the ranch. Nobody, no, nope. well, cool. so they'll, they'll let the cows run for the day. Yeah. <laughs> the Waverly team is featured in the Kansas Museum of History's Cool Things podcasts voted number one on museumpods.com. And the Bulldogs are part of the museum's special exhibit, Game Faces, Kansans in Sports, through December 30th, 2007. These are just a fraction of the real stories about real people that were the focus of our programs in 2007. Real stories can be found in everything we do. Our Read Kansas cards combine reading with history to help elementary students make a connection to Kansas history. As a joint project of the Historical Society and the State Department of Education, sets of Read Kansas cards were distributed to all public schools and they can also be found online. The Historical Society's newest online resource, Kansas Memory, offers unprecedented access to photographs, letters, diaries, and objects. Selected items provide dramatic content for the new Kansas Memory Podcasts. I was born in the year 1836 on the farm of George Bain. He was my owner and gave me to his grandson, Thomas, when we were both babies. Thomas was three months older than I. His mother, having died at his birth, he was given to my mother to raise. This treasure trove of Kansas history can be found within our walls. Our collection contains more than 34,000 cubic feet of state records, nearly 500,000 photographs, and more than 100,000 objects. We invite you to join us. Climb the 296 steps to the top of the Capitol Dome, tour a historic building, or see a compelling exhibit at one of our 16 state historic sites or our award-winning museum. We want to help you find information on restoring your old house, tracing your ancestry, or preserving your family photographs. And we want to excite the children of Kansas to learn more about this great state. Join us in person, as a member, or online, and make your personal connection to Kansas history.